Hello everyone, I am Mehrab and in this tutorial I will show you how to track a satellite using my site. Now to do that you have to first go to this site which is satellite.netlify.app. Now look at the spelling of satellite here, S-A-T-E-L-L-I-G-H-T, satellite.netlify.app. Now for this one, uh, a desktop with a Chrome browser is more preferable than any other browser or mobile phone. So try to visit this site from desktop and Chrome browser, right? Now in a nutshell, to track a satellite, you have to specify three things. First of all, you have to specify the mode or the view at which you want to track the satellite from here, from top here. And then secondly, you have to specify the timeline at which you want to track the satellite. That means whether you want to track the satellite right at this moment or do you want to track the satellite at any time in past or future. You have to specify it from here. And thirdly, last but not the least, you have to just select the satellite from this list you want to track. For example, if I if I select Hubble Space Telescope from here, now look at that the mode is map view currently and the time is live. So the Hubble telescope is being plotted in the map view here and uh, and it is being plotted live you can see the time here 6:25 pm which is the current time in bangladesh now we can just browse through this list and select a satellite or else what can you do is that you can just search for a satellite or a satellite group or search for a satellite mm, belonging to a specific country from here for example if i want to get a list of all the satellites which are geostationary you have to just write write it down here which is geostationary. Then we get the list of all geostationary satellites currently in our database. Now note that there are 52 satellites currently in our database and we will definitely add more. And then you can also search by country. For example, if I write India here, then we get a list of all Indian satellites in our database. And, and sure, obviously you can also search a satellite directly by its name. For example, if I write down Bangabandhu satellite one, then we get that satellite here. And if I select this one, we get the satellite plotted in our map view and and obviously it is live and if you select the details under any satellite then you will be able to see all the details of that particular satellite let's get a little bit specific about the views now the first one is obviously map view in this view the satellites are plotted in a google map and you can toggle between different types of maps by default a plane map is loaded but you can also toggle into a hybrid mode and in this mode all the high definition images taken by Google is being loaded right and that's our map view now to demonstrate the second view let me just select another satellite which actually moves I just selected the Hubble Space Telescope now the second view is quite interesting and it's called night sky view and this view actually signifies the view you would get if you just went to the location at which the satellite currently in and you just looked at this sky. The current position and the trajectory would look quite similar among other celestial bodies and stars. And that was our night sky view. The next view is called 3D model view. Let me select the view. Now as you can see in this view the, the satellite which is selected here is represented as red along with all other satellites. Now this view actually represents the real-time 3D positioning and clustering of all the satellites relative to each other and to Earth. Now if you look close enough, there are some satellites which are quite close to Earth or which are quite near to Earth and there are also some satellites which are quite far from Earth. Now actually it makes sense. From textbook we, we read that the geostationary ones are quite far from Earth, around 35,000 to 40,000 kilometers far from Earth. And if you just select any one of those satellites, let me select this one. Look at that. This is PSN VI satellite, which is geostationary. So that actually makes sense. And if you if you just let me zoom in. And if you zoom close enough to the satellites, to any one of the satellites which are quite close to Earth or to or quite near to Earth. For example, I am looking at KMS-4 satellite. If you zoom enough, you will be able to see those moving in real time. Look at that. Let me zoom a little bit more. Look at that. This is actually moving and this represents the real time position and motion variables of the satellites. Let me zoom, zoom another satellite. Look at that. This is a cluster of satellites. 
let me select this one i'm looking at isis if you zoom close enough you will be able to see all the satellites moving you see that yeah that was our 3d model view and and let me demonstrate a little bit more from this view you just select a satellite and it will be loaded in three dimension here okay let me show our bangun satellite one in 3d model view so i just selected bangun satellite one and it is right here this is our bangun satellite one and if you look close enough it is obviously geostationary right and look at that here is bangladesh and here is our satellite so so using this view you will be actually get a clear view of coordination and clustering of all the satellites and that was our 3d model view and last but not the least our last view is the first person view let me select the view and in this view you are seeing what the satellite is currently seeing looking at earth right for example here bangun satellite one is selected and the current time is 7 12 pm as the timeline is selected as live so you are just seeing what the satellite is currently seeing looking at earth considering its current position and altitude and all other things and and the day night shadow you are seeing here it is also realistic so to prove that uh, let me select let me go to another time let me go to morning this let me go to morning today today is uh, october 1 so let me select 2020 october 1 and let me go to 11 am today so it is kind of a feeling of time traveling right so let me select 11 am and if i just go to this time you can see uh, the satellite is looking at a daylight here right and if i s if i again switch the timeline to live you can see that the night shadow is already actually is already arrived here so this is our first person view mode Using the views and the timelines, sometimes we can get quite interesting things. Let me share an experience. Okay, I'm playing this video. As you can see at the bottom, this screencast was recorded as uh, at sev on 17 September 2020 and the time was 5.16 p.m. I was just randomly sightseeing using first person view of Hubble Space Telescope and as you can see in the video, I saw some strange and mysterious dot-like things among the desert you see here and later i googled it and found out that these are actually some man-made rivers somewhere in libya now interesting enough we can actually recreate this moment from our side we can actually go back to that time and we can again see those dot like things or those man-made uh, rivers right now let me demonstrate that uh, note that the date was 17 september 2020 and the time was 5.16 p.m. Okay. Uh, the mode is selected as first person view which is alright. Let me select Hubble Space Telescope. I selected that. And now uh, that uh, the timeline is currently selected as live. Let me go back to 17 September. 2020 September 17 and the time was 5 uh, 5:16 pm so let me go to 5:15 pm so we get 1 minutes of heads on 17 september 2020 5:15 pm let's go now the camera is being locked yeah as you can see the camera is already locked it is hubble space telescope and the time is 5:15 pm the date is 17 September 2020 and the altitude is 536 km and the velocity is 7.6 km per second. Now let us wait till 5.16 pm. You see? Those are those mysterious dot-like things I was talking about. And using our first person view mode and our timeline, we could successfully rec 
retrieve this moment of time in our first person view and that is quite interesting you can also try it by going into this site and by following the instructions and that's all thanks a lot for watching this video and if you have any query about this site or if you want to know about the source code or something like that you can just mail me let me write down my mail here So it is mehrab.hakbb.0001 at the rate of gmail.com. Thanks a lot for, for staying for such a long time and see you. Bye.